to have you this morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time you're watching us and you're watching this. <laughs> we are so glad to have you. So last week we started a new sermon series and also we were taught this month's greeting by Jojo. Hi, so so she's going to do it all over again so that you get a drift of it. Come on Jojo. Alright, so my friend here, Kendi, say hi Kendi. Hi people. Will help hi. me do it. So it's, it's very simple. So I ask the question and she responds. Hi, please. Hi, too. Hi, so much. Hi, much more. Otherwise, likewise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jojo. And hey, with that, welcome. we are going to get into the praise and worship. And we hope that you actually get to join us. Come on, let's go. Hold it, hold it. Oh, 
praise your name. He is worthy of our praise. And so I want us to read this verse. Um, Re- Revelation 4 is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And we'll read a verse from that chapter. Revelation 4, verse 11. You're worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. And God, our God has so many names. He's the same God, but he has so many names because he has so many attributes. And one of his attributes is, he's the one who made things to exist. And that name is Yahweh. The name for that is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. And so today I want us to just worship Yahweh. And we glorify his name and magnify him and put him at his rightful place. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise. Yes, we do. For you alone deserve it. Yahweh, Yahweh. And your name has power. None can contend. And your name's authority, he runs to my defense. Your name gives me victory again and again. And your name is Yahweh. Yahweh is your name. Let's sing. Your name be lifted high.
of us we cry Our hope is in that name The name is We find our being and our existence in Him Oh Yahweh, oh Yahweh, oh Yahweh, oh Yahweh worship and in our lives oh Lord you are here you're the reason that we exist oh God we were created to worship you and we'll do that for the rest of our lives and when anything comes to us all we do is call on that name because our name is powerful your name is powerful Lord we love you and we adore you and we magnify you and it's in the name of Jesus we have praise and worship and the people of God say Amen, Amen. I declare that in God's word, God is going to start opening our eyes in this season and show you things that you're like, how did I never see this? Uh, things that are going to change our lives. When you bear fruit, you glorify God. You become God's billboard. You become someone who makes God look good. You become somebody who people are like, wow, what an amazing God. The reason that God gives us the ability to create wealth is because he's fulfilling a promise that he made to a man called Abraham many, many thousands of years ago. Wow, wow, wow. Welcome, Mavuno Church. We're so glad you're worshiping with us today. And as you've seen, we're excited that this is the week of the mega gathering. This is a week when we have a gathering that gets all the, the people who consider Mavuno Church their home church. This Saturday 19th, you've just seen it, and it's gonna be phenomenal. It's gonna be a mind-blowing experience. I promise you, you will not regret being there. We're having the, the live experience at Mavuno Hill City, which is in Nairobi, Hill City headquarters uh, in Athi River. I uh, would love to have you there. If you're too far and your campus where you're watching from is a bit too far, we're going to have our gatherings, our, our virtual gatherings in our different campuses across the world. So talk to your campus pastor if you'd like to be part of that. If you would just want to watch from uh, on YouTube because you won't be around, you won't be close by, uh, then let us know because we'll send you the link and we just can't wait to fellowship with you this coming Saturday. I hate to say it, it's a cliche. I know everybody says this, your life will never be the same. Trust me on this one. So hey, uh, we're, we're jumping, we're continuing with our great series. We started last week, uh, Pastor Milton's delivering it. And just before he comes on, I just want to pray for us as we give. Uh, one of the things that always strikes me about the Mavuno congregation, whatever Mavuno congregation, this is one of the most generous churches I know. And over the years, uh, you have given faithfully to God's work. It's because of the gifts that you give that we're able to, to, to bring the gospel to people in far-flung places. We're able to disciple people in our schools. We're able to reach people uh, who need help in many, many different ways. We're able to, to do all the ministry we do in marriages and all those other things that we do at Mavuno Church. And we're so grateful. It's because of that partnership with you. Paul talks about the Philippians and he says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for you, I pray with thanks because of your partnership in the work of the gospel from the first day till now. And this is my prayer for us, that we'll continue to, to abound more and more in our love for Jesus as we give. And so I want to just pray for us as we're, as we're giving to God's work. Uh, the information for giving is on the screen, but allow me to just pray for you even before you give. Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you for this amazing uh, gathering of people called Mavuno Church. This is this family called Mavuno Church. I thank you, Lord, for over the years, just how generous these people have been, the people that you've called by your name. And Lord, I just want to pray again as their pastor this week, that Father, as they give, that Lord, they would always have more than enough. I pray that Lord, every need and every prayer that they have, you will answer. 
And I pray that, Father God, you would continue to be gracious to us in every way so that, Lord, we can partner with your work of extending the kingdom of God in our generation. And so I want to bless you, God's people. Even as we wait to receive God's word now, I pray that your word would come with power, with authority, and with conviction to help us become the people that you've called us to be. And so I bless you, God's people, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God's people say it together, Amen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, uh, where you are watching us from. I do answer to the name Milton Jumba, Jumba like a big house. I am one of the pastors here at Mavuno Church. I'm so honored and privileged to bring God's word to you today. Let me begin by thanking our senior pastors, Pastor Moravia and Pastor Karo and Jao, for the privilege that they've given me to share God's word this month in this series that we've dubbed Life on Mission. And as I start this conversation today, um, let me ask you a question. What is your favorite advertisement or awareness campaign? What is your favorite advertisement or awareness campaign? This could be video, it could be radio, it could be whatever. Please write it down in the chat box so that we could know what actually touched your heart. Um, mine. <laughs> Mine is crazy. I'm not even sure I should share this in the pulpit, but let me do so anyway. In the 1990s, in the scenarios from Africa, the HIV awareness short film uh, ad called Iron Underpants. That was my amazing thing. In this ad or awareness campaign, a young man called Musa has a hard time keeping his interest in women in check. His friends talk to him about having iron underpants, meaning that he actually develops an iron will, but Musa goes and has literal iron underpants created for him at a metal workshop and walks away without the key. In fact, the, the, the guy calls him, hey, you forgot the key. He shouts back, I don't need it. <laughs> Hilarious or ridiculous as it may sound. This ad or awareness campaign illustrates the order of life, doesn't it? That there are many voices that speak into our lives and in our broken nature we are bound to do things that we may feel good about but may end up hurting us if we do not do what is right. You see, the thing that makes us feel good is not always the right thing. The consequence may be grievous and in the end, even as the Bible puts it, there is a way that seems right to a man but the end of it is the way of death. So, since the beginning of time, when mankind disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, rebelling against the instruction of God that they should not eat from the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, man has chosen what is good and evil in their sight outside of God's instructions. The consequence has been that many have died condemned in their sin and alienated from God for eternity. On this side of eternity, in the land of the living, many are living under the weight and deceitfulness of sin, the weight of shame, the reproach, the struggle and bondage. Yet, their freedom has been assured in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And at the heart and nature of God, it is his will that all men be saved and come to the saving knowledge of the truth. You see, guys, the, the, the Bible says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which Paul, who writes this conversation, says he was appointed a preacher and an apostle. And I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth, Paul writing to us proclaims. This man, Paul, is showing us about the nature of God in this passage and the nature that should be our nature, that which we take up when we speak the stories of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, one, God in his moral will desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth rather than determining truth by their own broken nature. He says again that God has paid the penalty, the ransom for the condemnation that was upon man for their sin through Christ Jesus. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. 
<coughs> and this is the good news that need to be taught to others in faith and truth for the salvation of those who are lost and help them find their way back to God. You see, it is this nature and desire of God to seek and save the lost that started way back in the Garden of Eden when God introduced the animal and substitutional sacrifice when Adam and, sin, uh, and Eve actually sinned. You see, we need to understand this, that when this animal was sacrificed, the thing that God was doing was actually to shed the blood of that animal and the death of that animal. Why? Be without the remission of, uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So blood had to be shed. And the death that was upon man, because the wages of sin is death and it had to be paid, God had to pay it at that time. And we see it all through the entire Bible, God seeking to save the lost. In type, we see it when Abraham pursues Lot when he was captured and he was going there to rescue him the way God comes to rescue us from the latches of our enemy. We see it in type when God sets the children of Israel free from Egypt, which is a type of sin. We see it when God sends prophets with messages of warning, of hope, and deliver us to the children of Israel. And we see it when God takes a remnant in the children of Israel who are returning from captivity in Babylon. The entire book of the Bible is an entire of a lovesick father, God himself pursuing the freedom for his children. But the best of this nature is captured in one of the most common scriptures that you will even see them in the World Cup in Quota in the next few weeks. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But it doesn't stop there. Why? Because verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, I want you guys to understand the love of God. God loved the world, the sinner, the murderer, the corrupt, the liar, the adulterer, whatever it is. Yes, all sinners, all of them inclusive. God loved. And then he acted. He gave his son, Jesus Christ, to pay for their sin at the cross in Calvary and does not impute sin against them. They live the way they do simply because they just do not know. They do not know because someone has not introduced them to this good news of their salvation and freedom. It is the sharing of this wonderful story that makes the subject of our conversation today. So if you're joining us for the first time uh, this month, uh, we are looking at some practices that God as a model, as a teacher, as a mentor and a coach has given us for building up into his nature, into his image and into his likeness. Last week, we looked at the practice of prayer and its capacity to build up in us our faith muscles so that we could conform into that of his son. So today, we are looking at the practice of sharing God's word, his will, his desire over mankind to others, and what this cultivates in us, those who receive our testimony, our righteousness. You see, guys, why is it critical that we share God's story, that we teach others and evangelize to them? Let me share briefly three pointers that can help you tell the significance of a matter in scripture, even in life in general. Three things. One is what is called the principle of the first mention. You see, this is the explanation or description of a matter when it is first introduced in a context. And we see several pointers to this. In Genesis 2, for example, after the creation of Adam, God gives him an instruction, a teaching, a guidance, a direction. He says to him in verse 16 of chapter 2 of the book of Genesis, he says, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, 
But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. You see, just like in any sphere of life, God gave man his scope and freedom and stated the penalty for infringing his bounds. This was guidance, not limitation. When we also see the first mention, when Jesus introduces the subject of the Holy Spirit, he tells them that the Holy Spirit will teach them and guide them into all truth, not vibrate or feel goosebumps or feel like they, whatever. Um, then we need to understand the second thing. The second pointer to the significance of a matter is the depth or magnitude of the consequence of wrongdoing. God says to them, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. You see, this states the seriousness of the offense. You see, when you steal a chicken, it does not carry the same consequence in a court of law as robbery with violence. Disobedience to God's word or instruction gets us out of the life that God wanted us to live in right standing with him. It is something that is so catastrophic that it affects us throughout all eternity. That's why it's important to get people to know the word of God and walk in obedience to it. The third pointer to the significance of a matter is one's final word. In most cultures, even the one I come from included, the words of someone departing, their parting shot are taken very seriously. Jesus recorded final words in Matthew uh, uh, and also written by Dr. Luke in the book of Acts. Matthew says this, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Dr. Luke says this in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Allow me to say several things then out of these three revelations. God instructs us in the way that we should go. And when we stray away from that way, that direction, that instruction, the end of it is death. This death could be spiritual. You could be alienated from God. This death could be relational. That's why we walk in dislocated and painful relationships where people point a finger at one another, blaming one another, being conceited and selfish. It could be physical, and this could include sicknesses, diseases, and eventual physical death. It could be environmental, where the land fights back, and the fallenness of mankind brings up thorns, briars, del uh, uh, deserts, and every other thing, rather than the earth being fruitful. But also, it brings, eventually, societal death, where values and virtue crumble. And mankind becomes his own enemy through selfishness, conceit, violence, and other forms of corruption. The consequence is disastrous, my brothers and sisters. It's death, man. Some struggles you are having is because of sin in our lives. Some limitations we are facing is because of sin in our lives. And you see, guys, the wages of rebelling against God's word is death. Its manifestation could be varied, but the end game is the same. But for the ones who have been redeemed from the consequence of death through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have been mandated to be his representatives and that we ought to plead the case of Jesus to the pre-believers so that they too would be saved from the condemnation and damnation. This is sharing God's heart. When we do so, we become like God from what he was doing in the book of Genesis to what he does in Revelation when he conquers the enemy, Satan, and locks him up for eternity. We become like him. We take up his nature. We become witnesses for Jesus 
as he desired you and I to be. So let me ask you, how engaged are you in God's business of reconciling man and the world back to himself? Let me give you a checklist to see how you would be doing as a witness. What are some of the qualities that would make you a good witness? Because when you walk towards these qualities, one thing that you will gain is be in right standing with God. One thing you will gain is walk in the way that God would want you to walk. One thing that you will gain is that you will abide in Jesus and you will bear much fruit. So the first thing is confidence. Confidence matters in a witness. Witnesses are subject to dispositions and often cross-examination by people who carry opposing opinions regarding how they came to their opinion. What is more, their opinion needs to be believable by people who are not familiar with what is being stated or what is being disputed. You see, a confident witness will send out a message that they believe their opinion and that others should do so as well. A witness who's not confident about their opinion can send a message that others should have reason to doubt what they are saying to be true and valid. The second thing is consistency. Whenever one wavers in their opinion, in their knowledge base, in their understanding, they undermine what they are sharing. You see, for us to get to the place of consistency is get into the place where the Apostle Paul calls that we should be workers who are able to rightly divide the word of truth. And I'll tell you what you can do to be at that place. The third thing is trustworthiness. And I hope you see that it is your ability to be worth of trust. That's what trustworthiness is. A witness needs to convince others that their opinion can be re relied upon. Otherwise, they will undermine their credibility. That is why Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And then the next thing is experience. A witness who does not have any experience or any interaction with what they are purporting to give evidence for, defending or propagating, they cannot be relied upon. So God calls us his witness, his ambassador. And the big idea here is that witnesses and ambassadors represent the interests of the parties attached to them or the nation that has sent them. This factor makes the witness, the ambassador, an extension of the person or country they are representing. And it carries with it the reception of traits, of character, of qualities of the person being represented, ownership of their possessions, and their ability to replicate their purpose for continuity. If we, therefore, Position ourselves to the practice of sharing God's story, to teach, to evangelize, then we will become conformed into what God's word says about us. We will become the righteousness of God. And if in right standing with him, then the words of Jesus become ours too. When he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, Jesus continues to say, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you so that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You see, guys, what then do you need to do to be effective as a witness? The Apostle Paul breaks this down very well in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 to 7. He says several things that I want us to see. Number one, 
Find your strength in God's grace and mercy. He says, you then my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What he means is that for you to draw strength, you need to abide in Jesus and in his word. The second thing we need to do to be a great witness is to teach others and encourage them to teach others too. That is why in verse 2, the apostle Paul continues to say, And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So you don't have to do a new thing. You don't have to start something new. You just need to teach that which you have heard being said. The third thing is to endure and persevere till the end. Verse 3, Paul continues to say, Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. So Paul is telling you, for you to take this journey right, for you to remain in righteousness, you must abandon the things that you must abandon because a soldier doesn't engage in civilian things. Number four, be disciplined. Verse 5, Paul says, an athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. You see, you'll be disqualified if you get out of your lane, if you start doping and doing other things. So like an athlete, you need to be disciplined in the rhythms that a disciple should walk in. The rhythms of prayer, the rhythms of studying of scripture, the rhythms of rest, and all these things that we have been equipping you with at Mavuno. Number 5, is walk in patience and humility. Verse 6 of the same chapter, Paul says, it is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. You see, after the farmer has planted, he has to wait for the harvest. When you do all these things, oh my goodness, You'll be walking in the nature of God because God's heart is to do all that he can and all that can be done for the salvation of man. From the garden of Eden where he shed the blood of an animal to cover the sins of man and also protect man from eating from the tree of life and therefore be damned forever to the prophets that God sent to his people to Jesus' death on the cross at Calvary. God's heart has been to realign mankind and to save them from the consequence of their sin. When you reach out to people who are lost, you allow us to plug into the nature of God for seeking and saving the lost. People will remain lost, my friends, if no one reaches out to them. God's nature is one that seeks out the lost to save them. So, as time goes, and you're wondering why is the Lord taking too long? The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some people think, no, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. So what do I want us to do this week? You remember last week I'd asked you to put down three names of people you would be praying for so that they can walk in the amazing faith you are talking about? Send a message to those in your prayer list. Let them know that you are praying for them. Ask them how you can pray for them this week. Call them, give them a shout, pray with them. If their colleagues are at work, walk to their desk and pray for them. The second thing I would want you to do is to make time to listen to their life stories, to find a connection with them so that you can begin getting coaching points with them. And my thought is this, guys. Do not be afraid. God is with you. Jesus promised that he will be with you till the end of the age. Allow me to pray with us. Father, I want to pray for these your loving people. These ones whom you love so much, oh God. These ones who, Lord, you desire to share your nature. You desire to share your attributes. You desire to share, Lord God, your image and likeness with.
Father, I pray that you'll give them boldness to be like you, boldness to share your word, boldness to give instruction, boldness to correct, boldness to rebuke, boldness, Lord God, to encourage, boldness to comfort, boldness to edify, O oh God. Father, may they bear fruit that will last as they talk to the people that they have been praying for, as they share your word, as they share your truths, as Lord God, they step out in the thing that is what you desire them to obey. Father, may there be salvation stories, stories of comfort, stories of encouragement, stories, oh God, of edification. And I want to pray for you if you are on this call, wherever you are listening to this conversation from. You know, it is by grace that we have been saved, not by any work that you will do. So right now, I just want to invite you to partake of the grace that is in our Lord Jesus Christ and that you would come to the Father who has been looking out for you and who will not push you away. So he even says, if you want to give your life to Christ, if you want to be adopted back into the family of God, as you have been listening, you, your, your heart, your spirit has received some conviction. Just write your name in the chat and we will follow up with you. Give us even a phone number or an email address if you would, so that we can get in touch with you on what the next steps would be. But for now, allow me to pray. Father, I just want to thank you for those ones who are writing their names right now. I thank you for those who are lifting up their hands right now. I thank you even for the ones who are shy, who have not typed. But Lord God, are making this commitment. How much I pray that Lord, you who blots out our sin, you who imputes our sin no more unto us, you who's forgiven us, oh God, even before we sinned. Father, I pray for these ones. Would you receive them into your family? Would you receive them into your family? Would you, Lord God, blot out their sin, Lord God, from you? As far as the east is from the west, so would you remove it, O oh God? Father, how much I pray for them right now that you would cause them, Lord God, to walk in righteousness and in your truth, that they will be good witnesses, O oh God, and that immediately they will start sharing what they are learning, not waiting to be experts, O oh God, and you who's able to keep them from falling, you who's able to watch over them, you who's able, Lord God, to ensure that they don't fall, oh God, would you fill them with your spirit? Would you fill them with your glory? Would you fill them with your nature? And would you seal them for eternity with your spirit, oh God? And Father God, we just pray that you lead them to a church that is a Bible-believing church if they cannot make it to a Mavuno church and that, Lord God, your name would be glorified through the testimony testimonies of their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, good people. It's been awesome to have you today. Uh, and I pray that God giving us life and grace, we will meet again next week to talk about the next attribute that is so amazing you do not want to miss out on, which is love.